Let's talk about pride, an overused and misused word nowadays. But let's see what scripture teaches us about this. And I want to read one verse from Proverbs 21, verse 4. There it says, A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Well, it speaks here about plowing. And plowing prepares the way for the production of uh, the earth. And likewise, pride prepares the way for the production of other sins, as pride in itself is actually also a sin, as we will see. Pride is like a guide that leads the way to other sins. That is what it, it says here in this verse. As mentioned, uh, or also mentioned here, is um, a proud uh, heart and a high look or a haughty uh, look. And that appears on someone's face when he looks down on others. And not in terms of altitude, but in terms of attitude. Esteeming himself higher than the other. And that uh, perverted comparison is at the heart of the sin of pride. A person who has this problem is greatly hindered from knowing God because he has an equally perverted comparison between God and himself. But in reality, of course, and we know that God is so high above us that he is beyond comparison. God himself says about this in Isaiah 64, verse 5. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me, that we may be like? Then in verse 9 he says, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. So these are very clear words and that should take away all the pride, the haughtiness. How much is God away from us? I want to illustrate it by uh, making a little drawing, um, which I will do right now uh, as we speak. So I just put a few lines here on the paper and then I will show it to you. And the first thing that comes to your mind when you see it is something I can guess. So here it is. So this is what I just uh, put on the paper here. And the first thing that um, probably comes to your mind, at least on most of the viewers, will be Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. This is the Eiffel Tower. And uh, of course you're right about that, but at the same time you're completely wrong. Because this is not the Eiffel Tower. This is an image, a drawing of the Eiffel Tower. Not such a good one either, but it's a drawing of the Eiffel Tower. It's not the Eiffel Tower. It's very far away from the Eiffel Tower. It's just a sheet of very thin paper with some ink on it. While the Eiffel Tower is uh, 9,000... 700 tons of steel uh, constructed uh, and standing in, um, in Paris, the capital of France. So what I have here is, is not remotely like the Eiffel Tower. Yet when I showed it to you, this was probably the first thing you thought of, the Eiffel Tower. And so you see that an image can make you think of the original right away, uh, although in reality it can be Re completely different at the same time than, than the, the reality that it, uh, it, it pictures. And that is more or less how you can see us and God. We are in the image of God, but that does not make us equal to God, uh, even, not even remotely. Like this piece of paper with, a, with a, a bit of ink on it is far different from the Eiffel Tower, so we are far different from God, and God is far above and beyond us. Um, so that is just to illustrate um, that we should not uh, get any thoughts of being something compared to God. 
Yet the proud, they exalt themselves against God and that blocks them from a relationship with God. If you are the paper and the, the little the simple drawing and you think you are as the real thing, it doesn't go. But they believe um, the lie that they can be as gods. This is what um, Satan told uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden. And of course, it's a big lie. But this is popular nowadays. And this is also why books like uh, Homo Deus, um, uh, The God Man, uh, are so popular at this moment. And it's all pride. It's all pride. And no wonder we know where this comes from comes from because even Lucifer himself fell as a result of pride. We can read it in Ezekiel 28 verse 17. There it says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground and I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. So we see pride. Because of pride he exalted himself to something that he, he wasn't. And man acts increasingly in, after the likeness of Satan. Pride is the devil's religion. Um, we see it, their main um, uh, mantra is do as thou wilt. Uh, do whatever you, you want. Be whoever you want to be. That is what we, we hear and see all around us all the time, every day. And... Um, before too long, the Antichrist will be revealed and uh, also manifest that act of pride. Uh, he will be the, the, the Satan incarnate, you can say. Eh? It's, he will represent this. And so this is also what we uh, uh, read in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 3 and 4. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. So again we see this exalting himself, making himself full of pride into something that he is not. What does the dictionary say about pride? It says... Um, an undue sense of one's own superiority or one's own importance or worth. And then there are four synonyms given. Self-esteem, conceit, vanity and vainglory. And let's look at these four words to get a better idea of what pride actually is and why I said in the beginning pride is actually sin. Uh, Self-esteem, the first one, uh, this means to give more respect to one's opinion than others grant. Look how good I am, look what I accomplished, you have to respect me because my truth is, uh, is to be respected. And uh, this is what we hear all the time. Conceit, the second one, exaggerated opinion of one's uh, ability or worth. And vanity, excessive desire for admiration and praise. Now this is of course um, very recognizable nowadays. Um, just go, uh, well better don't actually, uh, but if you see social media, it's all about that. People presenting themselves um, with a desire to be admired, to receive likes. Um, and this... Um, and many social media uh, thrive on that, uh, like like TikTok or um, in many cases Instagram and, and uh, things like that. They they exist because of this. Vain glory is unreasonable boasting about one's accomplishments. So these are all synonyms of uh, of pride, and you see that none of them is actually uh, positive. It's not positive at all. Uh, so that is what pride is. Now I want to take it a step further and maybe it will um, make some uh, of your uh, eyes, eyebrows uh, frown. What is he, where is he going with this? But, uh, but bear with me. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16 and I want to read through to verse 25. 
Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, and mincing as they go, and making an, uh, a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with his cap the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. And in the day, the, um, in that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their coals and their round tires and uh, like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the muffers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, and the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hood, and the veils, and it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of a well-set hair boldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. The man shall fall by the sword, and die mighty in the war." Okay, so that um, gives a whole summary of uh, lots of um, ornaments and makeup and things that uh, women wear. Um, but this piece of scripture ends with the man falling by the sword in the war. But it begins with the haughtiness of the women. And that's not by chance. There is a link. Remember that this haughtiness is at the heart of the sin of pride. And it describes here how the women uh, are, how they walk and how they use their eyes uh, with these uh, um, wanton eyes or um, su seductive uh, looks. <clears throat> it's in every way to impress others. Attention and glory to self, it's pride. All that it describes here is pride. At the same time when you read this, this is what we see around us. This is what we see around us. Ornaments, um, bridal hair and things and uh, makeup and uh, nose rings and all these this, uh, things to draw attention to glory self. And this is what society and social media shows. And today, parents passively and actively encourage their young daughters with clothing, with hairstyle, with jewelry, etc. to draw attention to the wrong things, for the wrong reason, and at the wrong time, meaning wrong age, way too young. Parents give in to the pressure of the children who want to follow the examples of their role models, which are the online influencers, and, their, uh, and to their peers. Moreover, these same influencers, but also educators, uh, governments, and parents themselves, are actively sexualizing the children even at preteen age. And this has propelled the explosive growth of the LGBTQ plus uh, community, um, explosive growth of gender confusion and um, other perversions, because that's the category where all these things belong. Children have in many ways become mini adults with all possible perversion thinkable. Childhood is lost. And they call it pride. They think it's good. But pride is really the root of the problem. How different is the description here in um, Isaiah 3 from what Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. He writes there, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and, in so and sobriety not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. Remember also that the use of makeup and mirrors 
is actually taught by the fallen angels. We spoke about this uh, way back when we talked about the, the labor in particular in the tabernacle. Um, uh, and this uh, information comes from the book of Enoch. But it's meaningful. And now even the men follow the example of the women and have become effeminate. They too use the same makeup and uh, ornaments and all this, uh, this stuff. And we can say um, that like childhood, also manhood is lost. It's gone. But why is it mentioned here at, in the beginning of this section in Isaiah? It's actually part of a prophecy of the fall of Judah. And before it fell, society was disintegrating. And the description here of the pride of the women is part of that process. Morality was at an extreme low. And God mentions the behavior of the women because... They influ the, because of the influence that they have over the morality of the nation. And it begins at home in the family. The woman holds a critical position by instructing the children in morality, in spirituality, in purity, integrity, in faith. There are beautiful examples of that uh, in the scripture. And I think uh, to think of the, the mother of... Um, of Timothy, for example. Well, Satan knows all this, and that's why he dragged the women out of the families and into careers. He broke up families. He changed the woman's attention away from the children, away from the husband, away from the family, to self. And the man gladly embraced this new paradigm where the woman now has become the hunter. For many men, this is attractive and interesting. So with that, the first line of defense is broken. The morality of the woman, or of the women, that dragged down, uh, is, is dragged down and the families collapse. The nations will also collapse. Eventually, the world will come down as a whole. This is a sign of the degradation, the total degradation of society as a whole. And it's happening on a global scale. Um, also, uh, thanks to, uh, to internet, basically, to the media. So, is the woman to blame for all of this? Not per se. The problem is that men, nor women, are fulfilling their the role that God has designed for them. With God, there is order and clarity. Men and women, he created them. Let's read from Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 18 through 20. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the, Lord's, in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. If you read this, there is clear roles, there is clear order. And I'm not saying that there cannot be uh, exceptions, that there cannot be, that a woman cannot have a career. Um, but we have to consider all things and see that with what cost it may come and uh, if this is indeed God's plan. The line of protection is reversed as opposed to the line of authority. This means that the child is first protected by the mother. And mother and child are then protected by the man, by the father. And this uh, is not done because of obligation. This is done out of love. If love is not true love, is not uh, the driving force um, in obedience to God, of course, but it, it, it has to be love, it has to be genuine. If not, then it won't work. Um, 
Satan, however, is the author of confusion. He will do anything to make people go against God's will. And so now we see parents giving uh, puberty blockers to their children um, and putting them on a lifelong prescription of hormones and even having their bodies mutilated beyond repair and beyond reversal. And they still call it love. Both men and women must take up their designed role. If not, all will fall apart, as we see happening around us. There's godlessness, depravity, abominations, perversity, and they call it pride. Ironically, they use the symbol of the rainbow. That is defiance to God, but it's also acknowledging unwillingly, uh, most probably, that judgment will come, not by water this time, but by fire. And in the scripture we read from Isaiah 3, this ends with a man falling by the sword and, and dying in war. This is part of the judgment. It is what we also read in the book of Revelation, when the fourth seal is opened, one quarter of the population of the, of the world uh, is killed with a sword by famine, by, uh, by death. And the women are left desolate, it says in um, Isaiah 3 verse 26. And then it goes on in chapter 4. Of course, there, didn't, uh, there wasn't originally this separation in chapters, but it continues actually right away. Chapter 4 verse 1, where it says that seven women will take hold of one man. And that shows the magnitude of death that happens but it of course also makes a bridge to the spiritual application of this text the seven women are the seven churches the church too has forsaken her designed role there is heresy and there is great apostasy and so as we see the high towers of man's defiance and pride in society we also see the high hills of false and failed religion. Now what will happen with all this haughtiness? Well, it will be brought down. We read it about Lucifer in Ezekiel 28, and um, Isaiah says the same in chapter 2, verse 17, And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Pride will be put to shame. I want to end with two verses from uh, Proverbs, as we also started with Proverbs, this time from uh, chapter 16, verse 5 and verse 18. Verse 5 says, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. And in verse 18, Pride goeth before the destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Look at the pride around us in many different ways uh, that it manifests. It shows that destruction is near. It's yet another sign of these days, of the times we live in. There will be destruction upon this earth, judgment upon this earth soon, not by water, but by fire. So see where you are and get your affairs in order. There's little time left. Amen. Mm -hmm.